for anyone who has taken Ken's place as my caregiver for, uh, oh, I don't know, say a couple of weeks while he goes fishing, they get a crash course on the demands of helping someone with a disability. I mean, right away, my helper gets immersed in uh, countless routines, catheters, leg bags, disinfecting urological equipment, picking up meds from the pharmacy, toileting routines. Ugh. They help me with chest percussion therapy, spirometer readings, and they've got to blow my nose at least 10 times a day. <laughs> There's bed baths and nebulizers, and, and, and this is just scratching the surface. And after Kentada comes home from fishing, when I uh, say thanks to these friends who helped me, they always stand at the door and marble and say, people have no idea what you and Ken go through, that they're clueless as to your routines. And you know what, they're right. People assume that I just wake up and here I am all dressed with makeup on. <laughs> and I guess that's my point. People assume that the disabled and their families have everything covered. It's manageable, it's doable, it's reasonable, right? Wrong. One individual, um, such as my husband, simply cannot do it all, day after day, week in and week out. And it's not just me and Ken. It is every family that deals with disability. And uh, when I observe these families, I think Ken and I've got it easy. I mean, many parents who come to our Johnny and Friends family retreats, they are raising children who have significant developmental delays. These boys and girls must be tube-fed and toileted. Other children have autism, some with sleep disorders. And then there are families with elderly parents who have special needs. Some say that it's hard to even get privacy in your own home when caring for an elderly in-law or parent. And even when the disabling condition in the family is not all that demanding, still, everybody needs a break. That mom or dad, often that single parent, they need respite. And the dictionary describes respite as, quote, an interval of relief. But it takes others who care enough to come in and provide that relief. Could be a neighbor who offers to learn a child's routine, or a Bible study friend or a relative who can just sit with an elderly family member and play checkers, anything constructive, while others take a much needed break. For example, recently I, um, I lost the use of my right arm with which I feed myself. So two evenings a week, my neighbor Kristen comes up and fixes and feeds me my meal while Ken enjoys his dinner. Oh, it doesn't cost her much time or effort, but who can place a value on that act of Christian kindness? And when Ken and I and Kristen say grace over our meal, I always bless the hands of my friend, my neighbor, who serves us. And oh, do these respite providers deserve a blessing. Because I tell you what, the need among us people with disabilities is so great. Approximately four to three and a half million caregivers have provided unpaid care to an adult or child in the last 12 months. And millions more respite workers are needed. Respite providers are needed for tasks that range from the demanding, um, as in my case, or tasks that are very doable, such as running errands or shopping. Uh, for instance, a special needs family invests an average of 13 hours per month just researching information on disease or coordinating doctor visits. And these are all simple tasks that any caring person could help with. And it's why I am so excited that Johnny and Friends offers a, a wonderful program to provide relief for families. And it's a university affiliated internship opportunity here at Johnny and Friends, which provides rest, hope, friendship, and encouragement to children and their families living with disability. Participating students in select universities gain practical experience and insight into the unique joys woo, and the challenges experienced by all the family members as they serve 
on a regular basis over the course of a semester. So if you know a college student who might be interested, tell them to visit johnnyandfriends.org for more details. Finally, you can help. Look for ways that you can assist families that need a break. A neighbor, someone on your cul-de-sac, someone in your church. Begin by simply asking if there is some practical way that you can assist. Assure the family that you don't mind being instructed on the basics. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Yep, you are serving the Lord Jesus when you provide help to a family that struggles with disabilities. So please remember the millions of families that need help. And uh, perhaps you can fill that gap. For as you do, you'll be serving the Lord Jesus.